morning, everybody. So rain on us, Lord. Not from uh, heaven today, or I'm talking about water, right? Rain, rain water. Please open your Bible in Genesis 22 and uh, put your finger in there. We will study the Word of God together. You can also open your iPhone or your Bible is. <clears throat> so the focus today, I just need to explain first, is originally I wanted to focus on Father Abraham. You know, the Father Abraham who had many sons. <laughs> who many sons, Father Abraham. But I changed my focus today. My focus is on Father God. So my focus is the tests of the Father, of Heavenly Father in, in us, in every one of us. So rather than the focus is on the test of fathers, it's the test of the Heavenly Father's Father on all of us. So just to let you know, anything with a purpose will be tested. So for example, a laptop. It has a purpose today, so I can display all this PowerPoint. Your iPhone, any electronic gadget, anything with a purpose will be tested. Now the Bible says that you and I also have a purpose. And so therefore, we will be not tasted, we will be tested. So in fact, every day, because we have a purpose, every day is a chance. Every day is a test. So here we go. Now, not only one time, one, one test, we will go through multiple testings in our lives. And my testing came this week. Okay, so this, this is what happened to my test. This was about Thursday. On Thursday, you know we have prayer and fasting. So I hope you signed up for that. I hope you remember I took a picture of my commitment. So Thursday was my commitment. 12 noon to 12 midnight. And the test began even before I started. Because I timed it well. So, so that I can finish my meal, right? Before noon. So that I'm prepared for a, mid, a noon to midnight fasting. So it was 11.49. Maybe that's not too, too good of a time. But 11.49 was my time to eat something. And all I had prepared was very simple because I don't want heavy lunch and then start you know, a 22-hour fast or something. Because I went beyond that. Obviously, you can't eat midnight. Eh? You got to go in the morning. And so, 11.49, I was preparing my poached eggs and my mango. Somebody gave me mango. And at 11.55, someone called me and said, Pastor, can you please pray? Because, you know, someone is going to uh, France for a mission. What a place to go for a mission. I want to go to Honolulu too for a mission trip someday. But I prayed for this person. And uh, first of all, when it was ringing, my phone was ringing, I was tested to say maybe I shouldn't answer it because my time is, how can I eat my poached eggs and my mango? Right? 11.55. Well, I, I answered it. I prayed. And you know what time it was by the time the conversation ends. And so my another test was, should I eat my food now? My poached eggs and my mango. And guess what I did? I ate them. <laughs> I failed just like that. So by the time, I was aiming for 12 p.m. to be exact, to 12 midnight or even further. But it was 12.08 by the time I finished. 
every day I said, well, I failed in that. So every day is a test for, for us, for you and for me. And in fact, in our text today, we can see three tests. We can probably see more than that, but for the sake of time, I'll focus on three testings, three tests that Abraham, the father uh, Abraham received from uh, our Heavenly Father. And we know it's a test because in Genesis 22 verse 1 it says, Sometime later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied. So we know that God is testing Abraham. Now let me just clarify the difference just in case we forget that there's a difference between temptation and testing. So when the Bible says God does not tempt anyone. He does not tempt us, but He tests us. So because the difference is that temptation will lead us to sin. And testing will lead us to a stronger character. And so God tests us, but He does not tempt us. And so we know that this is a testing for Abraham from our father. And it's the same test that we will receive in our lives today and this week. So the first test was the test of surrender. Say that word with me, surrender. 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 What is surrender means? What it means to surrender. It means, you know, in, in fact, you can use the word absolute surrender. And absolute surrender is when you give up everything. For my vocabulary, by the way, the word surrender, sacrifice, and suffering are all synonymous. It brings the same sound to me. Surrender, sacrifice, suffering. And for Abraham and for us, we will be tested every day. Every day is a test. God will test you. Will you throw the garbage on the streets? Will you pick up the garbage on the street and try to clean up yourself? Are you going to look away from sin? Every day is a test. I don't know if you know what it's up, but every day is a struggle. Because every day is an opportunity for us to surrender to, the, to our Father God. Here's what uh, verse 22 says. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Child sacrifice, we know from the Bible, is not allowed. But in the time of Abraham, this is before the time of the, uh, the law, remember? The pagan religion, it was allowed to sacrifice child. And so that's why it's never mentioned here that it was wrong to sacrifice. By the way, by the time Abraham was called by God, in this instance, but he started at the age of 75 when his first call to leave his country. 75, and you know how old his wife was? He was, she was 65. So they're all seniors, senior citizens. So for our seniors here, don't think that your life is about to be over. It's just the beginning. In fact, if you have seniors discount cards, that's, that's the beginning of a good life with God. It's the beginning of the call of Abraham and the call of Sarah. Now, before this testing, by the way, in Genesis 22, Abraham received so many testings. Number one, as I mentioned earlier, he was tested in Genesis 12 to leave his country, to leave his people. In Genesis 14, he was tested to give a tenth of all his income to Melchizedek. And of course, on Genesis 22, he was called to offer his son. He was also tested in Genesis 20 and he lied. He failed. He lied that his wife was his sister. It was half lie, by the way. Yeah. Because they were, you know, they were kind of related. So the test of sacrifice is really a test of absolute surrender. 
So as I mentioned earlier, surrender, sacrifice, suffering, they're all synonymous. I met this week, by the way, I met with Pastor Ben, uh, Dr. Jackie Lau. No relation to Dr. Jackie Chan or <laughs> Jackie Chan. Do Dr. Jackie Lau, he is a, uh, from the CMA, uh, CNMA, uh, our denomination. And he mentioned two things about why, he said, why do you think Christians in China flourished even though they were suffering, even though there were persecution, even though their churches were burned down and closed and they had to end up in houses? Why do you think Christian, the religion, the relationship with Jesus, Christianity flourished? One thing that I remember, he said, is because Christians in China, they had four things they want to do, commit. And one of them is suffering for Christ. So they talk about house churches. They talk about, you know, all you need to do in house churches is pray, read the Bible, you know, expect miracles from God. But one of them is Suffer, not be willing to suffer. It is suffer for Christ. And so when they talk about, you know, when a Christian would say, you know, I was in prison for two years for my faith. And then another one would say, oh, you know what, I, I, I was in prison for five years. And then someone would say, you know, I was in prison for 10 years. So that's the conversation they have. And so surrendering involves all that stuff the suffering. And so for Christians, for us, it is a call, this text is actually a call, this surrender is a call to be, not only to a sacrifice, but it is also a call to suffer. Because how much pain do you have when you offer your only son? How much suffering do you feel? And so Abraham, by the way, had two mountains. I know it says here in, in verse one that he had God asked him to offer Isaac in one of the mountains. But once the Mount Moriah was chosen, I believe he had two mountains there. To, number one was to climb the Mount Moriah. And the number two is that once you get there, another mountain is to sacrifice your only son. And mountains are actually symbolic of problems in our lives. And so maybe today you have mountains that you are trying to carry or trying to climb. It could be in your marriage, it could be your finances, your child, your health. But my question is, what happens if the mountain is not removed? You know how you can pray to, you know, with faith and God will remove mountain, that's what it says in the Bible. But what if, you know, your child is still Problematic. What if your child is still rebellious? What if your health is not healed? What if your husband does not change? I mean, you can't return him to the mother-in-law, right? Or could you? <laughs> what if those things never change or problems are not removed? Then we learn from Abraham. You know what he did? He climbed the mountain. He climbed that mountain. And that's what we need to do. We need to learn. And that involves surrender. Here's a second. Uh, in, in, oh, in verse 11, uh, uh, chapter 11, 17 of Hebrews, we are affirmed by it, that it was a test from God when it says, By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice, he who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. So we know that it was a test. And we will be tested. And one of the key tests, the sacrifice is a test of surrender. And the second one is the test of trust. The test of trust. You're going to have to trust a tiger to lick your head without swallowing you. You know, in, uh, in Indonesia, they found a python. They were looking for this 54-year-old woman and in the garden. And 
They couldn't find her. The whole neighborhood, the whole community looked for her. And they only saw sandals and the bolo, you know, the clean up uh, thing. And close to the sandal and the bolo was the big python. And they opened it up. Lo and behold, the woman was inside. You know, it requires some kind of trust for this person to have a tiger lick your head. But the test of trust we can find in 7 to 8, it says, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son. Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb? For the burnt offering. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. What is it that God wanted to trust Abraham? You have to go back to uh, Genesis 12. He says in uh, Genesis 12 that Abraham will be the father of many nations. And that the world, that's including us, will be blessed through him. That's a big trust. And so he is entrusting Abraham with this world, the salvation, the blessing of the world. And Abraham, we find out that the greater the, the trust responsibility, the greater the sacrifice requirement. Just think about it. The greater the, the responsibility you have, the greater the trust that the sacrifice requirement. In this case, it was to sacrifice his one and only son. But we know that Abraham trusted, you know why? Because in verse five, it says this, and let's read this together, verse five, ready, go. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back. Do you really think that Abraham believed in this? Because he is saying that to his two servants, they brought two servants, Isaac and Abraham and a donkey. So he said to the servants, stay here, we will go to that mountain and stay with uh, the donkey, with uh, Shrek, is that the, the donkey, Shrek? Stay with Shrek and we will go and we will come back and worship. So he believed that he, for some reason, will come back with Isaac. That involves, that requires trust. Trust is a very simple word, but very difficult to do. Let me give you an example. This week, Nina and I, I went with uh, Nina to the doctors, uh, her, uh, her surgeon. And uh, inside the surgeon's office, if you look at his office from the top of the ceiling all the way to the eye level, even chest level, are all certificates, all of the uh, honors, the degrees, the appreciation, are all posted on the wall. And remember, this is a, a brain surgeon. And so, when I look at all these qualifications, it makes, it makes you feel good, actually. It helps me to trust that he knows what he's doing, because a lot of people has, you know, have recommended him, and he's got so many uh, accolades and all that stuff. So it makes me feel good that at least, you know, he didn't take his degree online <laughs> like other people. And that uh, he didn't learn to operate uh, online as well, watching videos online. So the trust is equivalent to the sacrifice, you know, the, uh, the suffering that he has to go through, the sacrifice that he has to go through in order to get all, all these certificates, these degrees, these honors and appreciations and accolades. And it makes you uh, feel good. And 
For some reason, there is hesitation for us to trust God. Because God has so much more than that. But for some reason, I have a tendency maybe to trust more of the doctor with accolades than the guy. Because I got to make sure this guy can be trusted. And so we can trust God and he is asking us to do that. He, Abraham that is, trusted. And that's why he was able to say, come back, we will come back together. In verse, uh, in this verse that we just read, Isaac would have been 16 to 20 years old. So at 16 to 20, I'm thinking, you know, you have, you can run, right? You just put your sandals and go. So I wonder what took place there, but uh, the offering, the sacrifice did uh, happen. It was about to happen. And uh, Isaac, as a teenager, he was asking his father, maybe like in a sarcastic way, you know, like maybe because uh, Abraham at this age, at this point, the call started when he was 75, but at this time in his life, he would have been around 116, which I don't want to live that long. <laughs> and at 116, this took place. And so as a teenager, you know, maybe he was sarcastic. Dad, you know, hello, the, uh, all the stuff that we need, are in the fire, the wood, but where's the lamb? Did you forget the lamb? Forgetful? In Canada, we would call them old men. Old men? Did you forget the lamb? And uh, you know, Abraham might have said, no. We have it. It starts with an eye. <laughs> Take a guess. And so the, uh, at this point in the story, you know, the uh, surrendering and the trusting is the same test that we will experience every day. At some point in my life, you know, in, uh, in where I grew up, the only way we have, we don't have, when we get sick, we don't have doctors. We don't have hospitals. Well, we do, but it's too far. By the time you get to the hospital, you're dead anyway. So the only way for us really to survive is to trust in God. And you know, when you have nothing else, when you have no one else but God, your trust is really, really important. And when a doctor, for example, even in Canada we have doctors, but if the doctor tells us, sorry, I have nothing else for you, I can't do anything else, then what do you do? And in this case, all we have is God. And that's what I feel Abraham was. He was at that point where all he had was God. But here's the third test. Okay, so we will be tested to surrender. Will we be tested to trust in God? But the third one is the reason if we pass those two tests, the two tests that we'll pass will end up in us sharing or testifying the great story of God in our lives. It says, Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Say that phrase with me, the underlying one. The Lord will provide, right? The Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The original word actually of that phrase in Hebrew is Yehovah Yerke. And in English, of course, we say Jehovah Jireh, but that means the Lord will see to it. And so when you surrender everything you have, because you trust God, then the Lord will see to it. He will provide. He will make sure. And so when 
He provides, it gives us a, a testimony to tell other people of what God has, got, has done, what this great God has done for us. Now in Judaism, by the way, this story is, let me uh, unpack this in four uh, religion, okay? Uh, or, or three major religion. Number one, Judaism. Number two, Islam. And number three, Christianity. Because in Judaism, they see this as it is. They see that God is a great provider, Yehovah Yireh. But in uh, Islam, they see Abraham as someone who is the first prophet, and of course there are prophets after him, you know, down the line, then there's uh, Moses and then all the way to Jesus. They think that way. And, but they think that this is where they get actually the name Islam, which is, you know, submission, surrender. Because this is one of the key stories in Islam. In Christianity, here's the key with Christianity. We look at Abraham bringing or giving up his son, sacrificing, carrying his own wood basically to the mountain to be sacrificed. Christianity sees this and we think there is Calvary in the story. You know, Jesus carried his own wood to be sacrificed on the hill, Calvary, on Golgotha. And so these are the three major religions in the world. If you look at how many billions of people these are, because of the surrender and the trust, there is a testimony, there is a story that the Bible is relaying to us and also we can do that. See, the only way we can tell other people good stories is when we have great result from God in our lives. Here's what, uh, what happened. Let me uh, continue with my story about, you know, Nina and, uh, and I in the hospital, in the, uh, the doctor's office. Because for Abraham, he needs to take his son to the mountain, Mount Moriah. And for those of you who went to Israel, where is Mount Moriah again? It's in Jerusalem. It's where Solomon built his temple. That's where the area that Isaac was sacrificed. That is the same area that the Muslim destroyed and built the mosque. Golden Dome, they call it. And so here's the, the, uh, what happened to Abraham. So he has two, someone told me this, this is not original for me. He had two faith at this point. Number one, he had a, he can either have a faith that can move mountain. You know, when you pray, God, please remove this mountain. And he removes that mountain. Thus, someone calls that a mountain moving faith. But here's another faith. He can either, if there is no mountain moving faith, if the mountain is not moved, and he still needs to, to do that, then he needs to climb that. It's called a climbing mountain faith. So there are two options. One was for Abraham, if he was to pray and God would remove the mountain, then he doesn't need to climb up, right? But it was still there. So what did he do? He put in his hiking boots and he climbed the mountain. So, in our story, let me just personalize that today for us. In our story, in the doctor's office, the reason why we were there is that because they noticed that Nina's uh, brain tumor is growing again. I mean, it's only one, by the way, but it's two more. But there's only one, okay? So it, it, it went from 2.2 to 3.4 cm. So like, maybe like a, uh, 
some walnut, right? That's nuts, but that size. Here's the thing, we went there to find out whether there will be an operation or something. So the doctor actually, who operated her in 2006, removed some of that. The moment we got in, he goes, what can I do for you? He totally forgot that he did the operation. He didn't look at all the, uh, this, are the this is the doctor that I really trust. He didn't look at all the details before he talked to him. What's the problem? Or what can, what can we do? What can we do? So we have to tell him the story. And uh, he make it so, so easy. He sound, it's like, he goes like this. He showed us the, the, the picture. Oh yeah, it's growing this way. So, that's so easy. I can just cut this way and remove that. No problem. It's easy. Huh? He make us, he's done probably like thousands of this kind of operation, right? So he's like, oh. But do you have uh, any problem? Like, can you see? Uh, he tap all the uh, toes, all that stuff, the, the knees. You have headaches, nothing. You know what? He says, we don't need to do anything. Come back in one or two years. He makes it so, so easy. Like, it, it, oh, really? Okay, let's, let's do that. So, in two years, we don't know if we still have to climb this mountain or if God will remove the mountain. The only way for God to remove this mountain is that either he, it stops growing or He removes the one more or the two more, whatever you call them. But here's what, what we, I always thought this week because I wanted to find out, here's the, the key to my story by the way. I wanted to find out from Nina how she feels like you know i tried to be like a pastor you know pastoral care you know all the uh, things that i need to say or do and i said what what are your thoughts you know that's always a good question like right? what are you thinking about your situation here's the, here's the here's the funny part this is actually a funny one okay it's not serious he goes i was thinking like you know because i was really so you know Concern, and so I wanted to find out her thoughts, her emotions, and she goes, "I couldn't sleep last night. This is like the night before the appointment." Oh, really? Why? What are your thoughts? What were you thinking? What caused you to kept uh, be kept awake? He goes. She goes. Because I was thinking of after the operation, I would go on employment insurance and I would be on vacation in the Philippines. I said, huh? That's it. Is that why you couldn't sleep? That's like an LOL, right? I was expecting like some kind of a deeper thing, you know, deeper... Uh, but uh, that's her, I guess. So, the issue for us at this point is that whether God will allow us... If He will remove the mountain or if we have to climb this mountain. And you know what? There are times that God you know, many times, that God will not remove the mountain. And that's when you need the faith. See, the difference between a mountain moving faith and the climbing moving faith is that when you pray and God removes the mountain, He removes the circumstances, right? So that you don't need to go through that. But the other faith is that if God doesn't remove that, then the climbing mountain faith is when you have to go through the circumstances and be changed along the way in your character. And either way, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, my prayer is that we don't need to climb the mountain because I do that almost every day anyway. The grouse mountain. But our prayer is that we don't have, but if we have to, then we will roll up our sleeve and put our hiking boots. Because every day is a test. The test to surrender, the test to trust, and the test to testify. So that's why we have stories to tell others, because of our surrender and our trust. And so, I don't know what mountains you have in your life. We have our mountain, but you have all your mountains too. So if you have that mountain, I'd like to pray for you.
I'd like to pray for, for us, for one another. So let's uh, close our eyes.